together in which only one that is the common sound benefits from the association while the other called the host neither benefits nor is harmed so we have two organisms living together one is benefiting while the other is neither benefiting nor be harmed so that one is just normal it's just left neutral the other is benefiting and an example is seen in remora fish being carried from place to place on another fish called the shark for example the shark carries the remora fish around and feeds on the pieces of prey prey left by the shark while the shark is unaffected it's like this the shark provides transportation for the remora fish so it doesn't have to move it about on its own, then it also provides food. Out of the pieces of food left by the shark, the remora fish also feeds, but the shark is unaffected. The weight of the remora fish is not affecting it, and the food it is eating is not also affecting it. Then the next association, we have saprophytism. The IFA of muco secretes enzymes externally into the substrates, digesting it into soluble forms which are then absorbed in solution through the cell walls into the cytoplasm of the hyphae. Saprophytism is simply an association where an organism feeds on dead organism. That's the simple way to describe that. An organism feeding on dead organism. That is saprophytism. Then the next one is predation. Predation is an association of two living organisms in which one, which is the bigger organism, kills the other one, which is the smaller organism for food. So a bigger organism kills the smaller organism for food. The killer organism, which is also the bigger organism, is called the predator. While the organism that is being killed, which is also the smaller organism, is called the prey. An example, you see it in cats, cat and rat relationship. The cat is the bigger organism, is also the the one that kills the rats, so it's the predator, while the rat is the prey. The lion kills the antelope, so the lion is the predator, the antelope is the prey. The snake is the predator that kills the lizard, which is the prey. Then we move on to talk about ecological tolerance. Ecological tolerance is the ability of an organism to temporarily withstand unfavorable changes in their living conditions, which affect their survival, such as sudden slight increase in temperature, as may occur on a very hot day, on or on an excessively cold day. So, the ability of an organism to cope, to adapt to temporary changes that occur in their living condition, which affect their survival, is called ecological tolerance. Even though the new change in the environment is unfavorable, but the ability of an organism to withstand it is called ecological tolerance. Living organisms have a minimum and maximum limit they can withstand and still be able to survive. So that limit is called the limit of tolerance. There is a maximum limit and a minimum limit, limit to which an organism can tolerate an unfavorable condition. Then the tolerance limit is the limit of environmental condition within which a species can survive, grow, and reproduce. So the tolerance limit involves the organism still being able to survive, is still growing, and is also reproducing. If these limits are exceeded, the individual will have to move away from that area or become adjusted to the new situation or die. It has three options. If it has, it has a, a Z, this tolerance limit, it's either it, it emigrates from that place or it adjusts itself further to adapt or it dies. Then the range between the upper and the lower limits, that is the upper tolerance limits and the lower tolerance limits, the difference between them is called the tolerance range. It varies from species to species and even within species. The tolerance range can even vary from population to population depending on their ecological niches. 
the area where all these things can live successfully is called its geographic range. Geographic range is the area where an organism can live successfully. Then, examples of tolerance. First, we have the bark tree tolerating it. That is why it is found in the far north as the Sahel region of Nigeria. The mangrove is found along the southern coast of Nigeria where saline conditions exist. Also, shark lives in a brackish environment. If it is transferred to fresh water, it soon dies. So, the fire shark living in a brackish environment rather than in fresh water. The tilapia will survive in fresh water situation better. Then we move on to talk about adaptation. Adaptation is the extent to which the structure and the physiology of autism fits them to live successfully in their particular environment. You know, adaptation is part of the characteristics of living things we met, mentioned earlier in the biology class. Then, organisms are adapted in such a way that they can secure mates to reproduce their kind, they can defend themselves from attack by other organisms, they can compete successfully for food and other essential commodities, they can regulate their body temperature and conserve water. Those are the components of the adaptation. They can conserve water, so they manage water, they can regulate their body temperature, they can get mates to reproduce, they can defend themselves from attack, then they can compete successfully for food. So we're talking about adaptation of some organisms, how they adapt to their various environments. Now the first organism we're talking about is the bony fish or the tilapia. How does bony fish adapt to its water life? Number one, it has streamlined body which enables it to cut easily through water. Then it possesses paired fins for stability. The bony fish also has swim bladder which contains hair for buoyancy in water. Also, the bony fish has overlapping scales with free ends which enables water to pass smoothly over the body. The gills and the filaments are present in the bony fish for gas exchange. Also, it has lateral lines to detect vibration, temperature change, chemical change, and presence of enemies. The bony fish produces numerous eggs because the rate of death is high among little fishes. So young fishes die so much in the water. So the bony fish adapts in such a way that it reproduces, it produces so much. So that when they die, no matter the amount that dies, she still has some that will survive. Then the body fish has tough resistant eye for protection in water. Then it has slippery body that makes it difficult to be catch by the enemy. And also the slippery body enables easy movements in water. Then we'll be talking about adaptation of toad for feeding. The toad possesses special olfactory organ in the head for smelling the odor of its food. You know that's the first step in searching for food. So once it can detect, it has is sensitive to smell, detecting where the food is. So that's a headway. Then also it has a long sticky tongue which is attached to the front of the mouth cavity and it is it's free and light close to the throat. When the toad is flipped out, it captures its prey, and the prey of the toad is mainly flying insects. So when it flips out its tongue, it catches its prey, then it prevents, the tongue also prevents the prey from escaping. Then the prey is carried back into its mouth. The bulging hive of the toad is depressed inward to aid swallowing of the prey. How does the toad adapt for protection? The skin of the toad is slimy with mucus produced by the mucus gland, which makes the animal difficult to catch by the predator. Just as you have a fish, this uh, slimy body, the toad also has slimy body with mucus, so it is very slippery in the hand of the predator. Then the slimy fluid also keeps the skin moist, so it is able to resist 
drying up on land. Then the God has poison gland on his skin, which produces poisonous, it, it produces poison, then it, it also produces distasteful taste, which keeps the predator away. Once the predator wants to catch it, by the time it, it gets that poison, it just leaves the toad. Then it also has a brownish dorsal surface. That is the upper surface of the toad is brownish, and then the ventral surface, that's the under surface, is lighter. So it helps it to blend with the color of the environment, making it difficult for it to be easily detected by potential predators, viewing it from above or below. Also, the toad can change its color of skin on the land to blend with the environmental, to blend with the environment color. That's camouflage. When the, the toad is able to blend, change the color of the skin to be like the color of the sun or the color of the grass around to escape its predator, that is camouflage. Then, the adaptation of the toad for movements. The toad possesses a long hind limb with powerful muscles, which enables it to hop on. While the shorter and stout forelimbs absorb the shock on landing, the back, the hind limbs, that is the back legs, are long, while the front limbs are very short. So by the time it jumps with its long limb, the short ones absorb the shock. Then the hind limbs, when they are extended, they provide a force to take off. It also has webbed hind limbs and toes, which provide last surface.